Hello and welcome everybody to round 8 of the AIRS Championship and today we are at the Hungaro Ring in Hungary. Uh, this track, situated in Hungary, is quite short with lap times of about 1 minute 10. That's what we're expecting to see today. It is a clockwise circuit, probably more right-handers than left-handers and a mixture of fast corners and some very slow ones too, including the chicane. Without further ado, let's get down and talk about the grid. Pole position for today's race is taken by Thomas McHugh, followed by Finley Taylor, the two McLarens locking out the front row. And then we have Louis Sage, the Williams who has won the last two races, albeit one of them was a non-championship fun event. Christopher Coburn in P4, followed by James Smith. Then we have Mitchell Langenberg and Joseph Murray Sr. We finally come to Mihail Valiak in P8 in the other Williams, followed by Alan Kopic, Johan de Jong, Reina Akikawa, Matthew Barton, Aaron Curtis, Armani Rosotto, Gini De Campo, Samuel Graden, Isaac Fischer, Isabel Harvey, Wef Polk, King Kelly running out of the top 20, uh, Justin Regani, TJ Nisbet, uh, Nisbet out qualifying his teammate, good qualifying from him I should say. Then we have David Granville, Timil Pereira, Marcos Aguirre, and Yuri Tuhud rounding out the grid. First time she's qualified legitimately for a race. Obviously, last time out doesn't count. Well, not towards the championship anyway. Without further ado, let's get started. As the four red lights come on. And we go green. It's a good start from McHugh, but it's an even better start from Philly Taylor. As we go down towards turn one, he cuts across. Oh! Philly Taylor almost spins it there. As they get very aggressive through T1. Looks like no one's got damage though. Christopher Coburn looking there. But it looks like the two McLarens are going to maintain their 1 2. As that is Louis Sage going around the outside. They're side by side. As we head up towards the left-hander, Louis Sage has got the move done. Chris Coburn slotting into P4. Mitchell Langenberg in P5. James Smith P6. Mihail Balak has gained position. And that's Johan de Jong gaining two positions as Murray Senior drops out the points. The back up front is Thomas McHugh. Let's pause quickly and take out the AI car. As we go back on board with Finley, uh, sorry, Thomas McHugh, watching Finley Taylor in the mirrors. As we head up the straight now. And across the line to start lap two. Uh, ignore the yellow. My car is just parked there. Makes no odds. Let's go around T1. The, the uh, downhill right hand hairpin. And into the left hand hairpin now and into this corner that can be taken flat. As we see, Thomas McHugh has got a bit of a lead in the background. That's uh, Mitchell Langenberg in the Benetton. He was alongside that Ferrari, but doesn't look like he's going to make the move. Feeney Taylor in P2 holding on at the moment. Christopher Coburn in P4. Langenberg and Baliak has now picked off Smith. And Murray Senior has got back into the points. As we see here, it's Mihail Valiak as Langenberg gets past, but is Valiak going to get past Hogan as well? Not quite. Yes, he does actually. It's about too soon. Valiak picking off another driver as he goes up into fifth place. And back up front though, Thomas McHugh's pulled out 1.7 seconds on his teammate as he's having to defend from the number five Williams. Uh, Mitchell Langerberg coming too. Using people. Uh, I need to take a look at something I've just noticed. Marcus Aguirre. What's happened to him? He's way off the back. 
we have to rewind quite a while. I think I've missed this for. In fact, yes, he's had to pit. Why is he had to pit then? He must have lost his front wing. Yes, he has, as you can see. It's a case of where did he lose it? It might have been in the kerfuffle of turn one. You never know. As he's uh. Ah, right, here it is. As we go up the hill, are we going to see Grand Faber get sideways and Maguire just runs into him? So that's that explained. And um, Weff Pope is also down here. I can only assume the same has happened to him. I assume he's out to pit as well as he's behind the Colony. Oh! And Weff Poke! He's gone again! Let's uh, get a replay of that one. Sorry. So he's up behind Yuri Too Good. Yuri Too Good doesn't move at all when Pope just runs into the back of him. Uh, her, sorry. Um, if we go on the replay again, we're going to go back and see how he's got back here. Has, he's going to have to pit for a second time. Wef Pope is not being careful so far, he's um... Very interesting. <laughs> so there's Aguirre in the pits. How's Pope back here? I'm gonna go right back to the start. So there's uh, Aguirre's front wing. How is Pope this far back? Oh god! It seems, yes. Pope has been clipped by the Ligier and he spun it on the grass as he'd been pushed out wide. And yes, he's just struggling to get going. Absolutely awful so far for Wef Poke. He's going to have to now pit for repairs as he clumsily drove into the back of Yuri Tugud. Back up front, however, it's Thomas McHugh. As they go through the left, the right, and back up towards the third sector split as they go around the right hand and now and drop downhill. Split there. Well, Finley Taylor is only 0.3 away. Let's go on board with Finley Taylor if we can. Indeed we can. And let's watch him as he's going to be chasing Thomas McHugh down the straight. Looks like they got pretty equal on the exit, but obviously he's going to have the slipstream. Finney Taylor sets fast off the race on a 118.2. I think in the intro I meant to say 120, not 110. I apologise for that. But no, Thomas, uh, sorry, Finley Taylor is... Um, He's just sitting behind, watching his teammate here. As I can see, Weff Poke from the commentary box has been... He's gone into his pit stall now. He's going to drop back a load of time. I don't think we're going to see much of him today. In third position for this race so far, though, it is Louis Saint. who's had that position most of the race. Followed by Mitchell Langenberg. Michael Bayek still hasn't closed quite up, but I can assure you this driver will close up. Then we have James Smith, Joseph Murray, and Christopher Hogan dropping back now, as Wes Pope's teammate Rainer Akikawa in ninth. Well, at least half of the Scuderia Italia team is doing well. However, she is under attack from Johan de Jong. As they go around the left hander, up the hill towards the right hander. It's a tricky corner this to the master. Do you want to get a good exit? Let's watch Johan de Jong now. As we drop down towards the hairpin, no, Akikawa defends. And it looks like Taylor has dropped away from the queue now, as a uh, fast lap of the race goes to James Smith, by the way. 
Uh, Louis Sage getting a little bit sideways there, but he's, he's pushing. It's not going to be long before we see him move. We're going to see Louis Sage get past. As we watch from the TV cameras. Henry Taylor, head of Louis Sage. As in the background, I can see Langenberg, Mihail Vajak, and it must be James Smith. They're in a, in a train together. It's not be long before one of them decides to make a break for it and try to catch the leaders. And at the moment, it's on to lap six of the race. It is Thomas McHugh with a second lead over Taylor, followed by Louis Sage. And then we have Mitchell Langenberg and Valak and Smith. Murray Cena and Coven closing up now. There's Akikawa and De Jong. Kopic dropping from his ninth position on the grid, but only to 11. This is good performance so far from the Leighton House March. Then we have Matthew Barton in the Minardi. Uh, Armani Rosato. I want to have a look back at Isabel Harvey. Had a bit of a talk with Isabel Harvey this week, actually. And uh, she said she's been happy with her year so far. But... Why have I, why have I paused? Uh, <laughs> sorry. Isabel Harvey, then. She's had good performances this year. Getting in the points a few times. Uh, but the, she said the Tyrrell hasn't really been there this year and they want to try and improve it before the end of the season getting a few more points if possible but the growth of Jordan and uh, Scuderia Italia has uh, caused them to fall a little bit further back into the midfield obviously they are a tier 2 team but Isabel Harvey, she's, she's looking for results here and at the moment she's not delivering but this is the rare occasion that she hasn't delivered. TJ Nisbet, this is a great drive from him. Uh, it's Camille Favier in 22nd. And Yuri Tugan in 24th. This is pretty good, but aided by the demise of Aguirre and Poke, this can be some good points for Yuri Tugan in a development race. As we go back up the field, as uh, Isabel Harvey right on lack of Isaac for sure. I've heard that Isaac Fishaw hasn't been upgrading the Minardi as much as his teammate. I don't think Minardi are too pleased with the British driver. Back up. In fact, you can even see, you can see that Matthew Barton in the number 24 Minardi, way up the field from his teammate, and that's what development does. If you slack off on de development, you're more likely to fall down the grid. And it seems that Matthew Barton is the better of the two. Anyways, Rena Power for the 2.5 over uh, Johan de Jong. And here are the two Ferraris sandwiching the number 20 Benetton. As Valiak trying to go around the outside of Langenberg into turn one. Nothing quite working there. Fast lap Smith, by the way. And at the front, it's Marcos Aguirre has already been caught by the leaders. As McHugh gets very sideways. Jesus Christ, he almost lost that car there. I think Marcos Aguirre has been a bit of a nuisance here. I'm actually going to rewind and take a look at that. Uh, that's too far back. Let's go on board. So, Louis Sage goes underneath and, well, there's no other word for it. Thomas McHugh poos himself and gets very sideways. And just like that, he's lost the position, but Louis Sage has now got the task of getting past the slow Minardi at uh, Ligier. Apologies. Making a few mistakes today. I'm just a bit flustered from what's happened already today, but that's life, I guess. As here comes McHugh, he's up the inside. Perhaps aided by the slow pace of the group. You can see they've all consultinaed up. In fact, how has this happened? 
Oh no, that's West Pike. I was about to say, if that was Rainer Akikawa, that would have been incredible. As it seems though, Aguirre and Poke have been caught by the leaders. They're not blue flagging, but that rule is not in effect. As here comes Taylor up the inside. A bit of contact, but not quite. Louis H here. Ah, in fact, here comes McHugh as they get sideways in touch. And in fact, Thomas McHugh has regained the lead. As they're all truly training behind Aguirre. They really don't want to be sitting in behind him. Uh, as it looks like Thomas McHugh is going to be the first one to try and make a move. As Finley Taylor gets up the inside of Sage. Allowing Langenberg past as well. That's the Benetton up into P3. You're on lap 9 of 20. As Marcos Aguirre is not getting out the way. I mean, he's not being a danger, but... Or is he? As Finley Taylor gets a little bit airborne there. His front end picked up as he hit clipped the rear end. As Langenberg making up positions. This is really benefiting the benef both Benetton drivers, really. As Thomas McHugh cannot get past the wire. Hungary, obviously, is a very hard uh, track to overtake at. And that is no exception here. As here comes McHugh, he finally gets up the inside. And now this is... Langeberg really needs to get past, unless McHugh... Uh, sorry, if McHugh is going to get away... Uh, in fact, Langeberg has got past. And Aguirre is still holding up Taylor, Sage and uh, the others. Not being a gentleman, the Argentinian driver. As Taylor gets past... Oh! Aguirre almost spins. He really is racing these guys. And somehow this has helped the Benettons get into second and fourth, respectively. But it is Thomas McHugh that is in the lead. This really hasn't helped the Williams cars, as Mihail Valiak is only just in the points. With the midfield runners, Johan de Jong, under attack from the Leighton House. As I believe that's Kopich getting up the inside. And the move isn't quite done. They touch wheels. And here comes Armani Risotto. De Jong has got the move done. And so has Risotto. He's followed him through. As Mihail Vak is under attack from both Reynak and Kao. Reynak and Kao is now in the points. This is brilliant from her. Joseph Murray Senior. He's saying to me that he's had thoughts about retiring at the end of the year. That would of course um, mirror what happened in real life with the driver in that car. Nelson Piquet did his final season in 1991. And up front it is Thomas McHugh in front of Mitchell Langenberg. As I see a front wing in the background, I'm going to go back. It is Johan de Jong. Johan de Jong has lost his front wing. And how has he done this then? So Akikawa and Valia could go side by side, but Aguirre gets sideways and takes out Johan de Jong. Marcus Aguirre. I think this might be penalty points coming his way. This is reminiscent of... Um, Jean de Bacca at round one being an absolute nuisance on track and now he's taken out Johan de Jong the poor lad I just want to check that I didn't see any other damage as we're going to go down the grid real quick uh, King Kelly there uh, Yuri 2 wait what's happened here oh my goodness me I've missed it James Smith has dropped to 24. What has happened here? So he has his front wing. And we're going to go back a lap now. Going through the chicane backwards. Where is this going to be? 
Turn one, perhaps? No? Okay, he's been in the pits. I assume this is to fix the damage. Only time will tell. Yes, indeed. James Smith has no front wing. And how on earth has this happened? And we're going to go backwards still. Going back maybe three laps back now. It looks like he's clipped the back of Weff Poke. So he's gone up the inside of Valiak. Oh no, it's Valiak who he's lost his front wing on. Gets He gets into his rear end and we know that when right uh, when rear touches front, the rear end wins and James Smith has successfully dislodged his front wing. And he's back in 24th now. As Aguirre, Poke and that is it. That rounds off the field. That means Yuri Tugard is in 23rd now. But back up front is Thomas McHugh, followed by Finley Taylor, followed, followed by Mitchell Langenberg. And then Murray Senior and Louis Sage. Uh, Mihail Valak is in 7th far from that incident. As Freyna Akikawa rounds out the points. As it looks like the two Benettons are going to try and keep the Williams at bay. A 3-4 would be very good for them. And a 1-2 would be even better for the for the McLaren guys. They've been on catch-up, trying to keep up with the Williams pace. Uh, so far, with Mihal Valiak's amazing run of form, coming to an end a bit now. But he's doing he's still doing all right. But indeed, it comes down to whether Thomas McHugh and Finley Taylor can close up in the constructors. And let's see if either one of them can keep up in the drivers. This will give them a decent haul of points. I believe Aliak is somewhat in the region of 25 points in the lead at this championship. With half a season to go. It's quite a big ask. As we're on lap 13 of 20, by the way. The two McLarens are going to be battling right now. As we're going to sit on board with Taylor. Not going to try and move through there. Taylor has set the fast lap of the race. <clears> oh, <throat> one sixteen point two. As my voice is... <coughs> Sorry. I promise I do not have the coronavirus. Why did I say it so weirdly? I don't know. I'm in commentator mode. As we watch, look at all of the gestures on the wheel. I've always thought of Taylor as quite a smooth driver, but he's getting sideways quite a lot. These curbs must be quite slippery. I think we had some rain th before the race this week. Gets a little bit sideways there. So both of them do out the corner. So as Taylor's going to follow him into the right hander here. See the banking on the left. Quite a hilly place to put a circuit as you go downhill into the off camber turn one. As Finley Taylor continues to follow McHugh. Once again, as I mentioned earlier, it is a hard circuit to overtake on. We're on lap 14 of 20, which means we have six to go. And he's sitting in the in the back. I'm sure he's examining McHugh's driving to see where he's strong, where he's weak. As they head into the chicane here. Taylor clean as you like, but so is McHugh. Once again, Taylor being very clean. And we're going to go back into a more conventional TV shot. It is Finney Taylor following McHugh in the back. Louis Sage in the Williams has got past both the Benettons, and now both the Benettons are going to be under a fire from the Hell Viac very soon. As Rainak Cower is now in seventh, and Christopher Coburn 
In fact, here's Marcus Aguirre once again, holding up the midfield group. As this is a huge train, look at this. I can see TJ Nisbet right at the back of this. Well, not quite at the back of this. I can see uh, probably 10 cars all gathered behind Aguirre as they shuffle for position. I believe Wefpoke isn't actually... No, Wefpoke is not in this battle, even though this is where he should be. He is a lap down. It's not good for the drivers, as that is Regani being very brash without overtake. TJ Nisbet in 17th. This is absolutely brilliant from the Lotus outfit. Surely they're going to be up... Uh, Surely they're going to be in, uh, uh, upgraded to the next tier. Sorry, that didn't quite roll off my tongue. Here's James Smith in a battle with Yuri Tugud in the Colony. Johan de Jong. Uh, I believe we saw, yes, he lost his front wing. Marty Risotto, also back here. And then we have these uh, few guys. Matthew Barton is not. He is in the top 10, I believe. But back up front... Thomas McHugh still, with four laps to go, when is Finley Taylor going to try and make that overtake? He is on his teammate, he's not going to be wanting to try anything too rough, he's going to want to be quite a clean one if um, McLaren team boss is going to not have kittens. Silently stalking Finley Taylor is, he's... I'd say he's a dark horse in this championship because he's been quite under the radar with Thomas McHugh sometimes bringing out the brilliant performances but Taylor has got a few poles himself and he's been a good driver this season a bit sideways there from Taylor actually as in fact Louis Seitch is closing up this is what we've seen especially at the Shanghai Invitational event Louis H grabbed the win on the last lap of the race at the second to last corner. Really was a brilliant result for the Williams team. And it was a brilliant way to win, in fact. As Finley Taylor has sat behind McHugh for more than a lap. And he, McHugh is not dropping him though. A sign of what could be eventually. I won't cut away from this battle at the moment as Finley Taylor and Sage. Is Sage going to be a bit more brave on the overtake? Only time will tell. With three to go. So we're on lap 17. In fact, I see someone else in the pit from the commentary box as we see Valiak has got past Langenberg. Uh, I want to see who this is. It looks to be a Ferrari. As actually, who's this? I saw a pit indicator. Perhaps not. Perhaps I didn't see a pit indicator. In fact, it's Christopher Coburn. Christopher Coburn, how has this happened? He's in the barrier. Oh no, he's not in the barrier, sorry. He is in the pits. As we're going to rewind. A lot of people getting into incidents this race, and it is both Ferraris that have got into incidents. This is not good from the the Scuderia, as you can see Rainer Akau a little bit further up the road. I think this is going to be an, just a straight run into the back. Indeed it is. So here we go, down the straight we go into the off camber right hander. Plows right into the back of Akakao. Akakao are lucky not to lose the rear wing, not to lose the rear suspension. But unfortunately, that is Christopher Coburn pretty much out of this race as he gets sideways coming out the corner. And he's dropped back to 21st. Huey, too good. I don't think she's going to have a chance to overtake the Ferrari, but the amount of opportunities that have been handed to her this race. Pretty spectacular for the Colony driver. 
in what could be said to be the worst car on the grid. As we're going to go back up to the leaders, still Thomas McHugh leads. Mihail Valak has got past both the Benetons, that's kind of to be expected. Uh, Samuel Gradin is now in the points. Reynak Akikawa in seventh. But more importantly, we need to look up the sharp end. And it is Thomas McHugh leading this race. As they go through the right, through the left. This is sector two. As we're going to go on board with Louis Sage, actually. On this TV camera. Bit of touch of the grass for the front left wheel there. Doesn't seem to affect the balance of the car. As they trundle around the right hander. Around 80 miles an hour to get the exit. Looks like Sage has got a pretty bad exit, actually. Sets a 119.1. As Taylor still stalking the queue with three to go. I think I might have messed up my um, saying how many laps are to go, but I can assure you this is lap uh, number 19. No, I have two to go. I was right. In, I was right in the first place. With two to go, we're on lap 19. As Finney Taylor, we're going to go actually on board with him. As Mihail Valak is. Uh, very, fairly considerable amount back but here he is Finley Taylor on the back of Thomas McHugh as I saw Marty Rizzotto in the distance don't think he'll play a part he is of course in a tier 2 Tyrrell so they both get a little bit sideways at that corner we're going to go onto the TV far cam as they come out the last corner for the second to last time, the penultimate time, with one lap to go now, to make or break Finley Taylor. Doesn't go for a move into turn one, we haven't seen that one work out too much this race. Looks like Louis Sage hasn't got any more to give, it's going to be a straight dogfight between the two McLaren drivers. As they head up the hill for the final time, Reaching a climax of 185 miles an hour, Finley Taylor gets a little bit sideways. Loses a little bit of time to Thomas McHugh, it's probably about 2-3 car lengths. Head up towards the left hand and now Thomas McHugh taking it very, very quickly actually, but very smoothly. And then again so is Finley Taylor and it looks to me like McHugh has got a big enough gap with only a few overtaking spots to go that was one of them and here's the other the last corner isn't really the overtaking spot that is the best and indeed rounding the final corner Thomas McHugh retakes he, he takes the win in Hungary the second win of the season brilliant job from the McLaren driver Followed by Finley Taylor who valiantly fought, or perhaps valiantly followed as he never went for the move really. The two Williams finish 4-5, uh, four, four, sorry I got confused by their numbers. Then we have Murray Senior in P5, a very respectable finish. The Mitchell Langenberg, Reynak, Cow bringing great points to Scuderia Italia once again. As we're going to have to wait for Sandra Gra uh, Samuel Gradin to finish. But he's going to round out the points finishers, I believe. Indeed, round the last corner. Looks like Matthew Barton is going to finish ninth. That is an incredible performance from the Minardi. Not where we expected to see them. That is what upgrading does, my, uh, my fellas. Matthew Barton has been very consistent with his upgrade speed. And as you can see, it does pay off. Isabel Harvey as well, another one who's been upgrading. P5 
P10 for her. So we're going to actually head to the the indicator to show the final classified standings. Quite spread out this race, but not up front. But either way, it is Thomas McHugh who takes the win, followed by Finley Sailor, and then Louis Sage rounding off the podium. Valak in fourth, Murray Senior in fifth, Langberg sixth, Akakawa seventh, and Rodin rounding out the points finishes in position eight. As mentioned, Matthew Barton finished ninth, Isabel Harvey finishes tenth, Alan Kopich eleventh, followed by his teammate in the other Leighton house, Aaron Curtis. Uh, and Isaac for sure rounds out the top 13. Going down the thing here, we can see that two Brabham's finished 14th and 15th, with Jane Smith recovering to 16th. The two Lotuses of Favre and Nisbet, 17th and 18th. I think we're going to see a promotion to Tier 4 here for the Lotus team. As Christopher Coburn finishes 19th in the end, with Kean Kelly rounding out the top 20. Yuri too, good, brilliant performance from her, as uh, she finishes 21st. Armani Risotto in the Tyrrell, 22nd. And then De Jong, Granville, Polk and Aguirre rounding out the finishers. So then, this has been the Hungarian Grand Prix. I hope you have enjoyed. That was quite an exciting race. A few more incidents than we've been used to, but that is all okay. It makes for exciting content. If you did enjoy, leave a like. Consider subscribing. Uh, next time out, we are going to Spa, I believe. Historic Spa Frunkel Shop. And I can't wait to bring that one to you guys. Much like I can't wait to, for you guys to react to this one. And w without anything else to say, it's time for me to go. Take care, guys. Goodbye.